Hello, TEDx. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesus. Last name is Solis Leon. Um, I am a local poet and performing artist here in Las Vegas. Uh, today, I will be performing three different poems for you all on the topics of heat island effect, water scarcity, and climate justice. Um, a little bit about me. I am a first-generation Mexican immigrant. I have lived in the States since I was about six years old, and Las Vegas and the Southwest have been home since. Um, so I'm very excited to be here. So thank you to TEDx, and thank you to all of you for having me. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, in terms of my education, my background is in geology, environmental science, and capacity building efforts for underserved populations, specifically black and brown populations. Um, so yeah, I'm a little, I'm excited. I'm just excited and excited. Um, so currently, I work as a youth educator here in the community. Um, I focus on the topics of civic engagement, uh, leadership, and the arts. Um, so it's really cool to be in a space like this where, you know, we're trying to bring awareness um, to the issues that we face on a daily basis that are very often overlooked. So my very first poem is entitled Heat Isles. Um, again, it's on the topic of the heat island effect. For anyone who might not be familiar with the heat island effect, it is, uh, or a heat island, excuse me, a heat island is an urbanized area which sees an average of one to seven degrees Fahrenheit a hotter temperature than the surrounding naturescape. Um, this is due to heat absorption by buildings, uh, the streets, and just the infrastructure here in our lovely city. Um, and if you've been in Las Vegas during the summer months, then you know the heat bites back. Um, so not only do we get heat from the sun, but at certain parts of the day, the heat will also bleed from the you know, pavement, from the surrounding uh, nature, or not nature, infrastructure, excuse me. Um, and yeah, so it's, it bites back, like I said. Um, and this is a problem because one of Las Vegas is one of the quickest warming cities in the United States. Um, so this is my poem, Heat Isles. I rise from the white frost in the west, opposite my people in the heat isles, where heat-soaked streets bleed and the temperature rises, and temperaments follow in the deep wild, where too, like the sun, I've been raised, and the future of the valley lays, and the roads are constantly repaved and we have to continue to pretend that we are okay because in arid climates things decay and where there is excess heat and the people pray for the rains of their maker, for their sin, sins to be washed away, for change, for pay, in the place where the heat only knows how to take. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. Um, thank you all. Uh, so with rising temperatures here in Las Vegas, another thing that we are very familiar with is water scarcity. Um, here in Las Vegas, we rely on the reservoir, uh, which is, or Hoover Dam, which built the lake, like Lake Mead. Um, currently, it is in, a, or it is being depleted due to mega drought conditions here in the Southwest. Um, so as climate shift, we have seen less and less rain, less snow. With less snow, there is less snow pack. With less snow pack, there is less snow melt. And with less snow melt, there is less water for our reservoir to fill. Um, this is an issue because not only are, we're not the only state or city that relies on water from the Colorado River Basin. There are six other states um, those include Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Utah, Arizona, and California. So it's imperative that we all work together in trying to reduce and conserve our water. Uh, yeah, all of our water. Um, here in Southern Nevada, the Southern Nevada Water, water Authority um, has a plan to reduce water usage per capita from 110 to 86 gallons by the year 2035, which is great. But what happens after? Um, so... I implore you all to think about water usage. Um, again, here in Las Vegas, we're great at conserving our water, so it might not be something that we're super thinking about right now, but it will matter. This next piece is called Lake Mead. Nothing should technically live here. There is so little water that life should not exist, but I'll be damned. 
like the one that brewed the mead? Lakes surrounded by rings engulfed in a gold white blaze, where receding ports reside out of line, fortified in what I've known to be true. This desert hides sin in plain sight. But important above all else is that it makes you feel alive. And oh, how spirits thrive here, where everything I love has survived the fires. And yes, hard times come, but we've evolved to fill niches with the pigeons and finches and with our hellbound sisters straying from the call of the unrelenting wilds. But it's been quite a while since the clouds washed our valley with mercy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, this last piece is uh, on climate justice. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of my work, um, environmentally speaking, has related around capacity building efforts for underserved communities, historically black and brown communities, low income communities. Um, so this is something that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, the reality of climate change, much like any other social or political issues that we face today, is that these communities will be the first to bear the brunt. Um, I think that because climate change is this thing that we don't face on a day-to-day -day basis, it's this abstract concept, it's very easy to dismiss um, any of the real-world implications that are being had across the globe. Um, but yeah, I urge all of us to really think about the ways that even our neighbors are being affected by this. People in our very city, um, the east side, all of the people I've mentioned, right? Um, as climate change continues to worsen, so will living conditions, and people will be displaced. Um, it's something that's happening now. So climate change is not this thing that will happen, it's now. With that, or, well, I guess my last point with that is, I don't know about all of you, but I don't much like the idea of having to leave my home. This last piece, thank you, is called Justice Nevada. Shifting. Like the ground beneath our feet, shifting. Like the people that we used to be, shifting, sifting through broken promises stacked high as Everest, but we ever is clear about our footing. Because this is our home. And there are those of us who might not fully know our origins, but this is our home. And it's the home of our children. And I know that they will have to hold our undoing. They will have to show what we couldn't, what we should have but wouldn't. But I, I will show them how to love. I will show them how to tend and how to give back and when I look down, I know I will be proud. Because regardless, the giver of all will hold us her entire lifetime. I just hope that the children of our children's children get to see this. Because people are not simply reeling. They're devolving into needs unmet. Ideas are not enough. It's time to act. Thank you.